Hey everyone, and welcome to The Conspiracy. What do I mean by conspiracy? Well, I was let in by a multilingual genius that I'll only name as A.G. that the entire Western world's tertiary education is a conspiracy. What do I mean by this? Well, in the Western world, our education system is set up, so we're focused on marks and learning about, especially within engineering education, numbers and maths and the way it's done now and how to keep doing that. We set out to change that in this unit. Well, we didn't even call it a unit. To beat a conspiracy, you need another conspiracy. So we call this unit the conspiracy. What we had to do was come up with innovative and creative ways to solve these problems. Here are some examples of what we came up with to solve the problems that we will face in wastewater now and in the future, all around the world. Here's a short clip by Layla, Felipe and Bruno about how they beat the conspiracy making soap out of used cooking oils. Used cooking oil can cause two major impacts, economic and environmental. Due to the thickness acquired over the time, pouring through the sink causes pipe blocks both in our house and in the sewage system. So to unblock it, you have to spend a significant amount of money. Also, when your cooking oil reaches the water bodies, it will affect wildlife systems and also water quality. An alternative way to avoid the discharge oil in the sink is recycle it by making soap. Uh, the product obtained during the soap process is not harmful to the environment, neither to your pocket. Uh, you can save money using your own soap and also contributing with one less constituent on wastewater. Now we are going to explain how is the process of making soap. to make a soap with fat. But first we are dealing with some dangerous uh, substance, so safe in first place. I will need something to ride my mouth and my nose and something to protect my eyes. So I need a safe glass. <laughs> so step one, add the soda on the bucket. Soda and the stick. Then you add the water, hot water, in small portions until all the soda is diluted. Step two, you have to sum the fat on the soda cask solution. And mix it for 20 minutes. Step 3, we're going to add the alcohol to our mixture. And the sense. Vanilla. In this case, vanilla. Okay. 
and mix again for more 10 minutes. Last step, with the soap a red dawn, we need to let it dry for a while in a container. So we provide some juice box to be our container. We then need to transfer the soap to the container and let it dry for 24 hours. Then we need to let it rest for 15 days so the soda can react fully and don't affect your clothes quality during the wash. Now, to check if the soap really is working, we're going to do this pre-test. Add the water and let's shake it. Well, the bubbles prove it that it's it soap. It worked. So, that is it guys. Bye bye. What a great example of innovation. Now, to talk more about this conspiracy and how this unit helped them break the conspiracy, here are Michael, Jess and Dan talking about their expectations out of what wastewater was and how what they learned about at uni versus what we got from our man AG. Hi guys, my name is Michael and today I'm joined by Dan and Jess and today we'll be talking about our perception of wastewater before and after unit. So we'll start off with Dan. So Dan, how has your wastewater perception changed before and after the unit? Well, before the unit I didn't really think about wastewater, so I took it for granted, flushed the toilet and it was gone. Um, but after the unit I can fully appreciate the intricacies and complexities of the wastewater system. Um, yeah. So, what do you just so anything to add to that? Yeah, um, I agree. I think I didn't have the knowledge about the complexity of the system either, and it's interesting to know how many how much resources we actually give to treating wastewater and time and money that it costs, and the fact that we don't reuse a lot of it. So it's kind of made me want to learn a bit more about it and see if there's better ways to do it in the future. Uh, yeah, yeah. I think you both definitely make great points. So yeah, I think that wastewater is very underappreciated in our um, current generation. And uh, I think if you just imagine a life without the wastewater system, then that would be a living hell. So uh, we've talked about uh, the wastewater perception. Now I wanted to ask you guys, like, why do you think it's important to, to let the public know about wastewater? So we'll start with you, Jess, this time. Yeah, so I think it's important that the public know because the treatment of wastewater, um, the cost increases as people put things down their drains and their toilets aren't supposed to be there. So like baby wipes and oils. Um, but if people are informed that these things are causing a problem to the wastewater treatment system, then they can make informed decisions and they probably won't put these things down their toilets anymore. So that will reduce the cost of treatment. Definitely agree. So then what about you? Anything to add? Yeah, no, I, I completely agree with what Jess said. Um, it's really important to know, um, to know about it because it affects all of us. The cost of treatment goes up exponentially for the weird things that people put down mm -hmm. the toilet. Yeah. Um, so educating people lowers the cost of treatment. Yep, yep. I think once again you both made great points. I completely agree with you both. So, so yeah. So basically, I think that's it for today. So over to you, Fraser. Well, I'm glad those three all agree so much. But what is a conspiracy to fight another conspiracy if it doesn't help our global citizens all around the world? The next clip made by Erica and Makuka discusses how the developing world can be helped by wastewater solutions that we're coming up with as part of our conspiracy. Alternative techniques of wastewater treatment for developing nations. Conventional techniques could be unsuitable for developing countries because they require huge amounts of water and are very expensive. Alternative solutions include septic tanks, reed beds, compositing toilet systems, and human waste bioreactors. Septic tanks. These involve primary wastewater treatment systems where there is separation of solids and physical chemical treatment. 40% of BOD 
is removed and effluent can be reused to fertilize crops and the solids can be disposed of at the sanitary landfill red beds. This involves secondary treatment of wastewater and involves a reduction of ammonia, BOD as well as suspended solids. This is usually applied after a septic tank and there is usually a symbiotic relationship between bacteria and the root zones. Compositing toilet systems. These involve collection and treatment of black water. They do not require water to flush human waste but require addition of a sufficient carbon-based bulky material such as sawdust after using the toilet. Everyone can be reused to fertilize the crops. Human waste bioreactors. These involve the anaerobic treatment of organic parcels. Effluents can be reused to fertilize crops and it generates methane gas known as biogas, which could be used for cooking and heating. Great stuff, guys. However, you may be thinking in Australian metropolises, we don't have a problem. We flush it down the toilet, it gets treated, and it's all fine. Well, you would be dead wrong. Here's Mia and Aditya to talk about alternate treatments to what we currently do and what happens after we flush the toilets. Here you go. Talk about decentralised wastewater treatment. As Mia's pointing out. Decentralised treatment is the way to go from what we've learned in this unit. In the unit, yeah. Thanks to Anna. So, in the future, we think that waste will be seen as a resource, not a waste anymore. Yeah. And a key part of this will be made a key part of this will occur through decentralised treatment. Yeah. What are some of your great ideas that you come up with? Uh, the first idea that I came up with was like a really simple idea. Let's put meshes or uh, some kind of a strainer on everyone's wastewater outlet. That will stop them from throwing stupid things down the drain. And which land up ultimately at the wastewater treatment plant. So we could save a lot of money by that. And it will act as a deterrent and also educate people on what actually you know they, they don't realize it right now but as soon as those strains are there uh, and when they get blocked people will realize their stupidity so yeah that was a uh, okay -ish idea that I came up with I think another idea that I came up with is that through decentralized treatment a higher level of treatment will be achieved than is currently achieved through waste, the municipal wastewater treatment plants and also I think that people being more aware of their race of wastewater will make them reuse a higher amount for things such as water in the garden. And I think yeah. you had another great idea no, about uh, be getting Before we get on to my great idea, yeah. there was, you had this awesome blog about fish. So oh, why don't we review yeah. that? Everyone started calling you the fish lady. Well, so, decentralized treatment could help to solve the fish problem through the improved targeting of different nutrients, but I think that's a bit far in the future, what we're, our current standards are, yeah. unfortunately for the fish. Yeah, yeah. I think, I think the, uh, what was more interesting also was the last session that we had, uh, or the last and the second last session, both are in fact, which were on the business of wastewater. So the decentralized wastewater treatment kind of ties in with the business of wastewater as well. Uh, and also the last session which was the future and we spoke about data. So decentralized treatment can lead to vast amounts of data on treatment coming out which could help plan better. So we could start metering our water usage and metering the water usage if every tap is metered we know when it is switched on, switched off, we can predict wastewater from it. So things like that was pretty good. Uh, what about you? What else have we got? Um, I think you had a great idea about something like Uber for wastewater treatment. Yeah, I was like, I was like, we should lease out. There should be a company which leases out wastewater treatment systems to people, and basically recoups its investment through savings in water bills. So uh, it's a business idea, but uh, still far fetched, I think, uh, and it still needs a lot of pitching and polishing before it kind of reaches people. Yeah. So I think that concludes all we've got for decentralized treatment, but we think that this really should be explored more in the future and Absolutely. some of these like great ideas like this should be taken on by the public. Absolutely. Hoping for the best. Yeah. Thanks. Thank you. Whoa guys, it's a little bit dangerous to talk about the conspiracy in public in open daylight, don't you think? 
Anyway, here's a race from a nice safe location to talk about multiple uses of wastewater treatment sites. Here you go. The buildings of our future need to be smart and they need to be able to cope with demand. Space will become limited, so it is therefore essential that going forward, buildings are created with a multiple purpose in mind. While I was looking for ideas, um, I came across a blog which talked about creating buildings which could capture stormwater and treat it in the building and funnel it into groundwater for later use. Uh, the blog in particular that I was viewing was done by the Wastewater Wizard and in it um, she cited a report where it was where Perth was marked as a possible location for the implementation of this technology. Um, this kind of project would benefit Perth massively. Um, being able to cipher ground, um, rain stormwater into our groundwater after it's treated will boost water supplies greatly because a lot of water comes from our underground aquifers and it will just make water more readily available. And plus we're not using taking full advantage of the stormwater that's coming in our towns and cities anyway. It just flows away, it flows back out into nowhere, which is great. Um, treatment technologies like this are essential if you're going to build a society that carries lots of people, that needs to carry large populations, that needs to satisfy multiple needs. Maybe one day, um, we, us engineers, could be involved in a big project like this in Perth. I mean, it'd be nice to think. Pursue impossible, right guys? <coughs> Great stuff, Reese. It makes me feel a lot better to know about it, that our conspiracy has a wastewater wizard on its team. Anyway, this brings us to the end of our series of videos presenting the conspiracy to you. Thank you very much to AG and LC, don't forget, for making all this happen. Thanks for watching, guys. See ya.